Assalamualaikum everyone. Um, so today's talk will be on neo-colonialism. As our teacher Meg just uh, mentioned it a while ago, we're just going to have to develop a little bit about that, um, which is a topic that the English club defined and reviewed as very important and timely that we should actually talk about it and discuss the points of Z for better knowledge and a better understanding of the process. Um, however, as it will be going, I plan to have like a little review of Z and later on I'll be handing you the floor so that you will be having your own words to say about the matter. Um, in the 60s, when the majority of African countries achieved independence, the continent's future seemed prosperous in long term. The newly independent countries disposed of a huge reserve of all kinds of raw materials, favorable natural and geographical conditions, and population looking forward to finally take from that point what we could consider of how we could understand neocolonialism we just need to separate the word into two. First, we're having the prefix neo, and we're having the, um, the radical colonial, or colon, and we're having eel as a suffix. So when we're having every one part of this word defined specifically, I will be letting the opportunity to those who are in linguistics to do so. We're having a specific understanding that first we we're having the word colonialism in. So what is colonialism? We just need to go back and refer a little bit to colonial time that you all know that is started with the arrival of the white men in, um, in black lands. I would call that as uh, mostly Africa because in the context that we're talking, we're talking about Africa. And also the spread they made in the technique they use, in the technology they use to achieve their goals in the certain property time and righteousness in the achievement of their own willingness and their own goals. So that was only, according to Guy de Boucher, who did write in the book named Les Deux Versailles he mentioned that colonial, colonia is in fact the root word of colonialism, and it came around from when the time, like around the third century, when the Roman Empire was expanding, was evading, you know, just colonizing other lands, just like to keep them proper to his public, political, stuff and economical you know, uh, growth. So we could have that, which is a park of land, which was given as a reward to one of the soldiers, one of the Roman soldiers, so that they would have like a time of rest and go there and just like um, farm the land and you know do something that would be that they would be enjoying of course. <coughs> so that was was in fact the first definition of colonia, which is a Latin word. And after a short time, it did develop. It did, um, acquired new concepts until uh, the arrival of French, the arrival of white men like um, the Britain one and and Yassus here in Africa, decide to make another use of that word and defining it into another perspective, which was all about indoctrinating um, a foreign land for their own profit, be it economically, be it politically, or be it for the single sake of sucking the, you know, the outcomes of, of that land. So that's what in general we could be like grasping from my own perspective of um, colonialism. This is what I could um, share with you. Of course, some of you may be having like a better understanding or better resume, uh, resumation of Z. So, 50 years later, the continent situation is um, not significantly better. And the Western development had failed to achieve a positive result on a big scale. Mrs. Nkuma said in 1965, over the last decades, an increasing number of writers and activists have started to denounce what Ghana's first president, Kwame Nkrumah, 
became known as neo colonialists the existence of ongoing influence of the former political powers, which persists after independence, in many cases irresponsible for the, ex for the excessive exploitation of African resources and inhibits independent political policy. So which goes back to what I was um, explaining a while ago um, regarding the fact that Neocolonialism is not only, in fact, if you get if you it very well, we just see that neocolonialism is like a, a continuity of colonialism. And I would go a little bit further than that by saying that, in fact, neocolonialism is just like a modern way of slavery. Um, to get back to the point, I would say, despite the, the frequent use for the past few years, um, there is there is no general definition of um, clear de definition of um, identifiable of uh, new colonization. Uh, some of us have attributed coinage to some for South, uh, a leading feature of the Francophone and colonialist activist circles who firstly used used it in 1965 in one of the writings. Um, Denominated Sat 1964, Arban 1965, as a seed origin in Leninism, where it was used to describe a new form of domination applied after the colonial period to independent states. Mm -hmm. In this understanding, the Western capitalist economies fully rely on the resources and the main power of the economies, reason why they need to preserve their dependence through our independence. <laughs> so in fact, which goes about understanding actually that, you know, we just calling for independence after the 1960s, but actually there is no, you know, righteous independence. Because as I said a while ago, um, neocolonialism is just like a process, a continuing process of colonial, um, of colonial time. They said it, because at the beginning, they know that when you go to colonize someone, at a certain moment, they will realize what we're doing. So when we reach that time, there will be a time that a break will be called from their side. And from that time, we'll be just like going to apply this type of policy just to make them believe that they are independent but still enslaved. So that's what we call in neocolonialism. Likewise, the fact of neocolonial methods are less direct and less visible rendered um, Neocolonialism is much more dangerous than colonialism. Mm -hmm. Since the, it implies a power without the need of, for justification for the master. At the beginning, when you were colonized, friends at a certain moment of time, they began with um, like demonstrating. Some people in France you know, started demonstrating, saying that why the heck would we be developed by some black, you know, black countries or black natures and you know, and the mining people um, in some part of the world? Why the heck would they be like helping us to go? So, the country or the politicians was supposed to find a very good bomb so that to calm down those type of uh, demonstrating words. So they get to finding the right word, which is all about neocolonialism. So they, they give you colonialism. They say, okay, now you are free, but still you will be feeding us and giving us everything that we need. And despite that part, error, no one will be just like standing to complain or saying what's going about what is going around. Since neocolonialism supposes a combination of dependence in different terms, the presence of neocolonialism is determined um, as given only if at least three of um, the following four criteria are present. First is the economic influence. A presence of last of at least one important trade agreement which perpetrates the colonial trade patterns by maintaining, by maintaining import and export prices determined um, determined on one side by France and Britain. Um, the import and export quantities determined on one side by France and Britain. Um, Monopolistic access for French or Britain by companies, sure companies. The French British monopoly on transport. 
If you look at your country, you'll see the very perfect example about that. Or in terms of documentation, um, of the list, one important piece of the third world treatment to French or British cooperation, such as the provision of better condition for the French and Britain company um, than the local ones. So, in Minister, in terms of economy, we're just killing our local people, our local productors, and giving it back to you know the Westerners. Those who are here just like to suck the, uh, the blood and you know of other countries. Us, in fact, will be hearing some of our president being saying that, oh yeah, you know the Westerners, these foreign companies are very courageous. They come to our land with the risk of losing everything, but still coming to look for something very specific to us. So we need to yield them every single resource that we have. This is what our president Macky Sall said before the before the elections, and he went outside to say so. So, secondly, the political interference, a support of political leaders by French or British institutes. You will see that still nowadays we're seeing that you know our leaders when they and they need to do something, they need to first listen to um, the colonizer. They go to France, okay, they say, sir, we back, so we just want to listen to what you're going to give us as directives, and we're going to do that. That's what we are living right now. It doesn't really matter to go and find, you know, big uh, ideas somewhere else. Just like look at your country, you can see which in which you are. Um, secondly, um, direct payment to winning parties. I think that's the case with you know the on ongoing case of um, Alien South. The manipulation of the population in favor of, of, of the winning party. For instance, we go for election, they know that this leader is supposedly to be losing the election. So they do whatsoever possible just to maintain that leader, that back leader, into power. So that they would be having somebody to exercise their force and to continue what they want as a goal or as so whatever, whatsoever presidents they want to apply in the country um, to be done effectively without anyone to have anything to say. Or um, the manipulation of the elections, as I said a while ago. And one or oh, one last thing um, the presence of at least one important case of that French or Integration in internal policy, such as bribery of local politicians resulting in deciding favorable policy. One final point is a financial dependence. Presence of monetary control, you know it. Frank CFA. Mm. The exchange of rates fixed by France and Britain. And the French Britain influence in the financial policy and making of the former colonies. So it's being relegated in uh, to the hands of um, the former colonies, the former colonizers, to have the exact, you know, the exclusive power to control what is happening in the lands that they were supposedly having as a former colony. And as let me tell you, that it is still the same thing. Um, a military presence. I would like to stop a little bit there and just like make a little um, little comeback to history regarding the presence of military, um, the military presence of, of, colon of colonizers in, in, in the land. It used to be done that when um, I think one of the one of the general, the French general, um, be it Louis Philippe or Pierre Laprade or others. When they used to defeat one of our um, our resistance uh, leader, like Lachor or um, Al Guindai or whosoever, they used to bring in the army in the land that they have colonized, so that to show first that they are the owners of that land, and secondly to show out their force, their strength. So, which means that look from that concept in the past. Take it from the past and look at now. What I'm saying, I could go a little further than this by saying that um, everything that they do, they just pay attention 
to make sure that the one they colonizing is not actually as well developed, as well armed as they they thinking that one to be. They're just linking some policies, some training facilities, building some I don't know some stuff that will, what name they will be given to it, but just by the, you know for the same single end of controlling what capacity does the colony have in terms of military weaponry and to have the IOU. The military presence of defense agreement, we could see also that some of the countries when they're having problem with um, Mali, Mali recently, you know, we had French coming there just like to see the Mali. What did they do there? If you go for safety for further searches, do not, do not retain yourself from the internet only. But just go to find the soldiers that went on the terrain and ask them, in fact, how did it go? They will reveal to you without hiding that it was a play game. It was a game. It was a game. They weren't there just to represent, yes, for security. Politically, they weren't there for security. But when they went there, what did they do? They were just like watching out. They say, okay, 10, um, 10 terrorists was killed, or 10 soldiers were kidnapped over there. And, but just after that, what do they do to sort that out? When you have a, um, a bird's eye view on the problems of Africa, we will say that this is very critical. But when we have like a very clear glance on what is going on, you would realize that you would realize that it is all about the play game. Played by the colonizer, the current leader, and also the unknown population. Because they lead you and they let you do something that you don't actually understand or something that you don't actually do oh, willingly. And then we make you follow, then in propaganda and everything going around it, then you follow. And secondly, the S colony guarantees security. The S colony is guaranteed security to its leader by exchange of a specific program. For instance, for instance, I will take example from military pacts. In 2016, there were 38 nations that came to Senegal, 38 nations, and it doesn't in checks in C E T seven. It is a camp over there. So they gathered in Senegal for the implementation of ATA, anti-terrorist agency in Senegal, for the first time. It is the same thing with when you look when you, when you watch the film Jack Bo, I don't know what you know, Syrian anti-terrorist. That's the same thing. For the first time in 2016, they came to Senegal to implement it through a program named the Fit Club. If you go to the internet, you'll find it. So in that program, they say, they pretending that they are training the soldiers into border patrol or border security, which I don't actually know the sense of Z. When they are pretending that there is a lot of um, um, problems of security in the world. At the very beginning, Africa was not really merged in. But at the end of the day, here we are. We are supposed to, you know, to face the music. And that's very soft, very abnormal. And what helps them do what they're doing right now, it is just population, people are unknown of what is going around. Are we actually aware how our country is being led? We just casting our vote to a leader who has presented to us a program without our understanding, our fully understanding of the program. We're just going for election, we're pretending, or we're thinking that we're organizing those elections, though the ex-colonizer or the current colonizer, the, under, the unseen hand controlling the leading process, is still putting into power who he is lenient to them, to toward their courses. So we need to understand how the country is going. We need to be aware of everything that goes around in order us future leaders or us current leaders of this country to be able to stop what type of sickness the country is facing or what type of sickness um, our, our continent is suffering from. Everybody did understand that um, like 20 years ago, there were some people that were saying that Africa is like, there is no future for Africa. But at the end of the day, 
what happens? We see the Chinese, we see all the powers of the world running, rushing to Africa. Why? What for? Is it just we just blessed? No. Because they're seeing the interest in it. We're seeing that the patrol, they're talking about the petrol, right? Or it's being foreseen in Senegal. And we're having like all the great powers of the world rushing to Senegal. Why? We need to understand how the process is going in order to contain everything that will be rushing out from Z. If it is a benefit, then we will be cutting it for our own population. If it is not something good, we just will be getting rid of that. But firstly, a total independence is supposed to be in and out of the procedures of leaving of the African countries. And we need to feel that in our classes. We need to feel that in our food. We need to feel that in our dressing. We need to feel that in everything that we do. But if we say, I'm free here, every 4th of um, April, I just go and march around and show out and show my guns and my pistols and everything running around that and make people feel that they're in the penzo. Me, Mr. President, I'm just really having a very big tie around my neck that I had jibbled to some of the French people. You know, seriously, it is just a mockery. It is just a mockery. We're supposed to be intellectuals. Let's go beyond, let's go beyond the mirror that is being presented to us. Because in the mirror, what I, I, I can give as an example, they're saying, they're saying that when they came to cut some of our great process, this led to bring them to America, what they did was to present them some of the mirrors that they would bring from uh, from European countries, and they were amazed. And by 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 the fact of by dint of being amazed so amazingly, they were uh, you know able to cut some their family members and sell them for the fact of having a mirror. So that's the same thing in modern time. We have in the mirror of a good leader. We have in the mirror of a good program. We have in the mirror of you know good education system. LMD. I don't know what craziness. We have in the best students of the world. I don't know what 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 rich university. But it is all about pushing. Why? Because we're not free at all. We're not being told. Just like take one example, Sheikh Antadiyah. Recently, he has been recently being allowed to be, you know, his teachings to be included in the curriculum of the students. Why so? When he has defended the black color of the whole Africa. It is alone. It started somewhere. The colonizers manage to make us be lost and through generations. They discredited our studies, they discredited our knowledge, they discredited our history, they discredited our identity, they discredited our human beings' qualities in order to make us think that we are what they are. So we are far away from what they could be. That was all I wanted to say, and I hope the exchange was very fruitful. I will be now yielding the floor back to you guys. If you have anything to add on it, you know, be free to express yourself. If there is any question, of course, that we could exchange on, I don't have the total mastering of the <coughs> topic because I know you guys do. Um, but any question that we'll be raising up, I will be just like yielding it to someone who can, of course, answer properly. Thank you so much for listening.